We're going to talk about the Phoenix Suns, and specifically, we're going to talk about these two guys on the screen, Devin Booker and Chris Paul. Obviously, neither of these guys are in the MVP conversation, which is honestly a shame because they are the second seed in the NBA right now. But if you were to pick between Devin Booker and Chris Paul, who would be the MVP? Chris Paul. I think when I think Devin Booker was going to put up these numbers, no matter who was on the I think he's capable of putting up these numbers. But I think factor in leadership, mentality, when Chris Paul walked in, you know, he put that different mentality in Devin Booker's head. You know, he helped him get better. He helped the team get better. His assist to turnover ratio is off the charts. I think as a scorer, he's not what he used to be, but in terms of playmaking, he still can play defense at a very, very efficient level. I think coming in, walking in, being that guy for those young guys, Michael Bridges, Cameron Johnson, DeAndre Ayer, I think he has to be the most valuable player because there is no Chris Paul. I don't think there is no second seed Phoenix Suns. You know, I think you can plug in one of the, I, th- I don't think you can plug in any point guard and he can have the same impact for Phoenix, but I think you can plug in a few two guards and they can still be a productive team. So that's why I would have Chris Paul as the MVP for this team. Mitchell Beal, could they have the same production? I would say Booker? Mitchell. I don't know about Beal, but I would definitely say Mitchell. I was thinking the exact same player, actually. Do you think Beal could? <sighs> no, I don't know. But if we – hold on. I think he could, but if – if we're going with I'm not high on Beal, though. replacing Booker with the same caliber of shooting guard, you kind of got to do that with CP3. So if let's say let's say they would have De'Aaron Fox, who you were high on. Yep, they would be. Ter- I don't. They don't think. Be I don't think they'd be terrible. I don't think they'd be the same team because CP3 brings a specific <laughs> aspect of the game to to the squad. He brings in defense. He brings in hard work. He brings in. I know I can make my teammates better, so I'm gonna do so. I'm gonna if I see I can, I have a lane, but if I see my guy open, I'm gonna give it to him. What of a more what, what about a more uh, similar play style like a Ben Simmons pass first point? He's too he 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 is too deficient on offense. He he he's great, but at the same time, he doesn't elevate everybody like Chris Paul. Like Chris Paul's intangibles and his experience in the NBA, his leadership. Like stuff you can't measure with the stats, or like Ben Simmons doesn't have that, you know. I'm, I can't agree with that personally. I feel like I, I, what makes CP3 different is that he can shoot the three, and so you have to respect that. So the spacing on the floor is obviously going to be different, but Ben brings more athleticism, more rebounding, about a little less passing because obviously CP3 is the best passing point guard in the league right now. He still passes the ball with the best of them. I'd say, in my opinion, he's a top three passer in the league. I mean, we saw even when jo- – why, why isn't he a top three passer in the league? Luca, LeBron, Harden. Chris Paul, LaMelo Ball, not going to lie. Yeah. Trey is a better passer. Say that I too. can't agree with that. I will, I w- three, I will give you LeBron because that was the first one that came the to Joker mind. Too. I, w- the Joker too. I would, I would take CP3 over Luca. Okay, but you have to give us Luca over Ben. You got to. Oh, excuse me. I'm, we're talking Ben. Yeah. Uh. I, I am I'm going to take I'm taking Ben over Luca passing Bottom wise. Line, he's not top three. <laughs> passing it. wise, yes, he's, he's not. not. You're right. Top. Harden Harden automatically with that you 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 stump me, and I'll take CP3. Okay, so that's but three. your point is so also regardless he and, and way better defense. He's he's arguably the best defender in the league. I mean, in my opinion, I think he is the best defender in the league. The only thing that separates them and why I, I would I, I agree with you that it wouldn't be the same is because CP3 actually has the threat of shooting. And so the spacing on the floor would be completely different. So saying that, who would your MVP for Phoenix be? So like we I said before, the best player on this squad for me is Devin Booker. The most valuable player on this team is Chris Paul. He's what makes this team go. He he is what sets the offense. He 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 calls the plays. He knows how to get his guys open. He knows how to read a defense and best adjust to that. Defensively, he brings a different mindset to everyone. It's a, it's a. Listen, if I'm if I'm busting my butt here, I need you guys to 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 work just as hard with me. So I feel like that's why CP3 leadership wise, clutch too. He's very clutch. There's a stat that he had 102 assists in April, 13 turnovers in 11 games. Like the efficiency that he's having with the ball in his hands is unbelievable. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna roll with CP3 as the MVP. I'll, I'll, I'm going to make my point, and I'm going to ask you guys a question because I said this the other day, and I want to get your takes on this. But Chris Paul, when they faced Philly uh, the other night, 
Devin Booker got praised for the shot. Chris Paul had 28. Booker did not touch 20. So, and also, if you look at the the raw stats, it shows Booker's having a better year. But when you look at the advanced analytics, it's not even close. But we'll get into the raw stats first. Chris Paul is averaging 16 and 9, shooting 48% from the field and 36% from the like field. He always averages that. Devin Booker is really? averaging 25, 4 and 4, shooting 48% from the field and 35% from three. But here is where they start to go their separate ways. Chris Paul's offensive rating is 122 when he's on the court. Defensive rating is 109. Mm. Win shares is 7.2. Box plus minus is 4. Devin Booker has a 110 offensive rating. Nice. So Chris Paul has has these plus 12 better in offensive rating. Devin Booker's defensive rating is 112. And if you don't know how defense rating is measured, the lower, the is, lower the better. is better because that's how many points you allow per 100 possessions. <coughs> Devin Booker has 4.1 win <laughs> shares, and he has a box plus minus of 0.5. So in terms of the advanced analytics, Chris Paul beats Devin Booker in everything. And the Suns added Chris Paul in the offseason, Crowder, and they stole Craig like in the mid-year. Craig has been phenomenal for them, and they lost Rubio, Oubre, and Baines. So we can say like just with the addition of Chris Paul, they have went from the 10th seed that they were last year to the second seed. Last year, they won 34 games. This year, they're at 41 in a shortened season. I think Chris Paul, obviously, there's a correlation between him going to Phoenix and them starting to win. So my MVP, like your guys' MVP, is Chris Paul for sure. What was your question? My question is this. I was on the locker room app, and we were. I was in a chat room debating, you know, Steph Curry and other stuff. And the the topic of who's the best clutch player at the point guard position in the league came up, and people said it was Kyrie, and Dame is there, Kyrie. And I said this, I would take Chris Paul over Kyrie in the clutch. I don't. Th- I don't think that's crazy to say. I-, I think we praise Kyrie for that one shot that he hit. But You've been saying what I've been saying for years. Outside of that one shot, there have been few and far between clutch moments that you can name. There have been more cold stretches than there have been he saved the day. Chris Paul in the clutch last year led the league in clutch points. This year, in terms of percentage, is top three in, in clutch um, percentage in the clutch. So I think Chris Paul is more clutch than Kyrie. So what's the question? That's hard for me. He's what asking think, who's who's you, the most you clutch think that's point crazy guard. To say, or you think that Kyrie's more clutch? Than I would. Chris I Paul? wouldn't say that it's crazy to say because you're 100 percent right. Last year, Chris Paul was on a different universe in the fourth quarter. He definitely. I I know for a fact he was number one in fourth quarter points. To say he's the clutchest point guard ever. No, in the league right now. And well, you're 100 percent right. I apologize. To say he's the clutchest point guard in the league right now, I think I I would still have to lean Kyrie. Maybe my bias is kicking in. I, Chris Paul has never, ever hit a shot as clutch as the NBA Finals, as you mentioned already. If that's the case. Christmas Day. You have to put Dame over Kyrie. I can't. Why? Because he Dame did it in the finals. Dame has hit multiple He did series. it in the finals. Okay, but Dame has hit multiple so series. So Rory's clutcher than most Derek players Fisher. ever? Not, well, I mean, that you took one moment. I'm talking about a player who obviously has shown greatness throughout the entirety of his career. You're reaching. A bit. <laughs> Robert, Robert Horry's had multiple well, he's, he, big he, shots, though. I'm just saying, Dame has multiple enders, like series, a series enders. enders. Yeah, against so. the Rockets and against against OKC. Listen, Dame would be top three for sure, no doubt. I want to say this: the only person I take over Chris Paul is Dame. Why are you I'm, disrespecting Kyrie? I wanna, I'm not. I just think he's getting slightly overrated. I want to say this: I think Clutch has become a. Who can just hit buzzer beaters and people don't factor in the whole fourth quarter? I think the whole fourth quarter and the 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 fact that you can control the fourth quarter uh-huh. is clutch. And I think that's why I probably would agree with Joel that Chris Paul can control. If, when you're a guy at six feet and you can control the game for 12 minutes straight in the clutch, I think that is incredible. And I think I, I would agree. I think in terms of like getting himself a shot, you know, that – Pick and roll, hit the midi is different. And then getting somebody else open, I think that's why I would have Chris Paul over Kyrie. I think I would I think Kyrie is one of the clutchest point guards in the league without a doubt. He's definitely top two, top three. But I think C B three is probably the clutchest because he can control the whole fourth quarter with not just his scoring, but his playmaking too, and his defense too. He's had 
multiple clutch defensive stops too. I don't think Kyrie ever had a defensive stop. In the also, clutch. the narrative around Chris Paul being bad in the playoffs is, is pretty ridiculous to me. But we talked about the MVP for the Suns. But also, I mean, you're very high on them going into the playoffs. So I want you to elaborate on that a little bit. Okay. You know, I think they'll have a good lineup in the playoffs. We know the, the lineup shrink. My playoff eight, which is the eight-man lineup I think they'll have in the playoffs, Chris Paul, Booker, Mikel Bridges, yep. Jay Crowder, Aiton, of course, Cameron Johnson, Torrey Craig, and Dario Saric. I agree. Maybe a little bit of Cameron Payne here and there. Mm-hmm. He's been playing good. But I think that's their playoff eight. Mm-hmm. So how far do you think they can go in the playoffs? So as a two seed right now, they would be playing the seven, which is who? Is that the Memphis? Trailblazers? Portland. Port- or- all right, oh, so Portland. Portland, or- Portland, or- Portland Mavs. Oh, so, all right, Mavs. Portland, Mavs, Grizzlies. I am saying for sure the Suns would beat all three of those teams. This is where it starts to get it's tricky. The Clippers. That's what I'm saying. This is where it starts to get tricky. Suns would have to play either the Suns. Suns would have to play either the Lakers or the Nuggets. Granted, the Nuggets beat the Lakers, which there's no way that happens. I think the Suns lose to the Lakers, no doubt. Could the Suns beat the Clippers is the real question. Put into they've sw- the Clippers have swept the Suns in the season series. Just wanted to let y'all know that before you guys start talking. I don't know if I can firmly say that that would happen. Would I be surprised given the Clippers choke job last season? No. I think I would take the Clippers without any bias in my heart. I think the Cl- the Clippers would win that series. Utah versus for versus Suns straight up. That probably wouldn't happen because it's a one two. Suns are right in that matchup. I mean, the the Utah the Utah Jazz shooting is definitely significantly better than theirs, but they're still banged up. Rudy Gobert hasn't been back yet. Uh, Donovan Mitchell just got hurt. I'm sure that they'll both be back by playoff time. But I don't know how the Suns right now can cannot be in direct competition with Utah. For, you know, if they were in a series, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if the Suns beat Utah right now. I really I wouldn't agree. be. I the think, only I team, the only, I, the only team, two teams, I apologize yeah. to cut you. Only two teams, I can't see them beating Lakers, Clippers. The only team I can't see them beating definitively are the Lakers. Yep. I can see them beating the Clippers, but I'd, I'd give the slight edge to the Clippers because I think overall their depth is better and their their top two players are better. You know, when you're going into the series and Kawhi and Paul George are, your, are the best two players in the series, I think you're in pretty good shape and your depth is about the same. I think... The last time we saw Phoenix and the Clippers play, what messed up Phoenix was their play down the stretch in the fourth quarter. And I think it opened people's eyes to something is that when the Clippers lock in, when they put a Kawhi on Chris Paul or Paul George on Devin Booker or whatever you want, either one of those two, you basically neutralize their best two players. Yeah. And then who are you going to play through? DeAndre Ayan against Serge Ibaka, another great defender. I think the Clippers just have too much perimeter defense and their offense is off the charts right now for for me to say that Phoenix can beat the Clippers in a series. I agree. It, listen, it comes down to Aiden. You. Sorry, uh, you got to get uh, your words in. but I agree with both of you. Aiden really, it, it if they want to go deep into this playoffs and really make a run, it's all on DeAndre Aiden because I know for a fact these two are going to show up. If Aiden can come and, and, and shock the world, be a 17-10, and 10, which would be amazing, there's no reason why they can't beat either of those teams other than the Lakers. 